<laughs> Here we go. Brian, your first uh, uh, training camp here with the Raiders. Is pretty excited to get started today, I would imagine. Absolutely. Um, you know, you kind of, we've talked about this a lot. You know, you, you start training camp about four or five different times as a coach. You know, when you come back, then when the early reports get there, then when the vets get here, it feels like there's like a new start uh, a few different times. And then obviously today will be our first actual day of practice. Um, and then there's the, the beginning where we actually get to get into pads, you know. So there's four or five different times where you feel like you're starting. But uh, it's a, you know, it's always a great feeling to get in there with the, with the you know, the team, the entire team and, you can see how excited they are, um, you know, and eager to get to work, eager to start becoming whatever it is we're going to be able to become this year. And uh, the coaching staff's been eager to, you know, get out there on the grass and start coaching. So um, it's the thing we love to do the most in our profession, and um, certainly there's a lot of anticipation and excitement today. I know the injuries are a little touchy subject <clears throat> at this time of year, but uh, a couple of three guys ended up on the pop list to start out. Um, are, are you hopeful that those guys are going to be back uh, in, in good enough time to get started? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, again, we try to avoid the time frame and predict and all that because there's such a difference between one player's body and another. But um, I know all those guys are working really hard, extremely hard, doing everything they can to get back to, out there on the field as soon as possible. And, um, you know, if you if you start training camp with 90 guys out there on the field, you're lucky, you know. So, um you know, whatever number it is, 86, 87, that we're going to have out there, I think that's, you know, we're doing pretty good. And like I said, the guys that, that aren't out there, uh, they'll be doing everything they can to get out there as soon as possible. Yeah, so your training camp now, about. is it is it second nature, everything coming together? Are you just so used to it or now as your head coach? Is there a different pressure? Uh, you're feeling nerves to make sure you're really maximizing your practice time and the schedule and all that? Yeah, I think there's definitely some different feelings. Um, I think the overall concept of training camp is something that you're used to if you've done it enough. But um, I just think the, the you know, the, the anxiety you feel is a good thing, you know, because you want to do right, you know, in your position, your job. And um, we've had, you know, some meetings and, you know, those kind of things. And, and each day at this point in time is a little different, you know, because the schedule and the reporting dates and the league rules and the time, and, you know, we're managing the times and those kind of things. So um, logistically want to want to get those things right. But, um, you know, I feel like I've gone through a few of these. Um, and just really trying to enjoy the process as being a head coach at this point. And got a lot of great people here that are, you know, on top of all the things they need to be on top of. And, um, you know, as I've said before, just trying to do the right thing in my role and uh, be a good leader for our team. Players were talked or asked yesterday about expectations, and they talked about that. Some said they don't think about them. Some said they do. As a coach, do you embrace them? Do you talk about them? Or in, in your room, do you think they have, you have the leadership that will handle any that come about your way? I think the only expectation we have is that we're going to go out there and work extremely hard to try to be the best team we can be each day and improve, you know, and at this point in time, during the course of this season, you know, we're in, we're in a, you know, complete foundational building type phase, you know, we're not worried about, you know, thinking about opponents and games and strategies and those kind of things. This is about fundamentals and techniques and conditioning and communication and, learning each other and knowing how to work with different groups of your teammates. And there's so many things we have to do between now and when we're going to play, you know, even play the first preseason game, you know. And so um, our expectation is we're going to have a great day today. I mean, that's really as simple as we can make it. Um, that's my expectation as a coach. And I think the team uh, has done a great job of, of adopting that mindset because it's the only thing we can control. Between Jonathan Hankins and Bilal Nichols, those are a couple guys that were figuring to be in the mix for starting roles at a defensive tackle. How do you feel about the group just overall without those two for however long in the trail? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know, hopefully that at some point here they'll be back, but um, feel good about the, the guys we've added. Um, we have a great deal of competition that's about to play out here in the next six weeks um, at a lot of spots on our roster, uh, and that's a healthy thing. You know, we... We tried to build the roster as best we could uh, to this point uh, with that in mind. Um, you know, we feel like that's the best way for players to improve and get better. Uh, I feel like that's a, a way for our team to improve and get better. 
uh, is that they're competing not only with guys on the other side of the ball, but they're also competing with the guys in their own individual meeting room. Um, I think it makes everybody better. And so um, excited to see that whole group kind of take form. But I, like I said, I think we have a, um, a lot of spots on our team where that's definitively the case, you know, and uh, we're going to give everybody opportunities and whatever, you know, they do with those opportunities, that will dictate, you know, how we end up, you know, making decisions ultimately. Coach, two weeks from tonight, Hall of Fame game in Canton. You're a Canton kid, so you get to go home for your first Raider game. Cliff Branch going in, Richard Seymour. I know uh, two guys, you, you probably knew Cliff, but I know you know Richard very well. Uh, how exciting is that? And also, from a player personnel standpoint, you got that extra preseason game. You have a lot of new guys. You got to find that chemistry and cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. How much time do these guys start getting in these preseason games? Because I know nowadays you got to protect your guys and you don't want anybody to get hurt. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the last part. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to try to do what we think we need to do at that point each week. Um, make the right decision for the team, but we haven't made any big decisions about, you know, playing, not playing, how much, not, you know, how little. I think some of the things we're going to see in practice in the next two weeks will certainly help dictate, you know, how we feel about, you know, organizing each part of the preseason. Um, and each game's important. It's a great opportunity for us to make progress as a team, to evaluate our players against different competition and different schemes, different players. Um, so we're looking forward to having an opportunity to do that. And, you know, for me, I know we say it's an extra game. It's, you know, there's only a couple of years here that we've been doing the three, you know. So for me, it's almost normal uh, that we have four. Uh, and so just looking back at some of our notes in the past about how we've used the four preseason games um, <clears throat> will probably dictate a little bit more of what we do this year. Um, and I, I, I really feel like this is a great opportunity for our organization, um, certainly to highlight two of the, the, the Raider greats um, that did a lot for our team, a lot for our organization. And, and I know there's a lot of people that are really excited to see Richard and Cliff, you know, uh, be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, for me personally, I – that's, you know, they'll, that's another story for maybe another day. But, um, you know, great to go back home. Um, I've never been able to participate in the Hall of Fame game. You know, this is 22 years for me. And um, there was a time where I was supposed to play in it in 2011, and that was the lockout year. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to having an opportunity to go back home and, um, you know, take the team to the Hall of Fame. Interestingly enough, a lot of our players and coaches have never been there, you know, so – um, it's a pretty cool fraternity, you know, when you get an opportunity to go through there. It's humbling uh, to see, you know, all the history and the tradition, and you're part of it. Um, and so uh, our team will be eager to do that. Uh, looking forward to, you know, all that's going to come with that. But certainly uh, the most important part of that trip will be what we can do on the field and how we can improve as a football team. Coach, in the past couple of days, uh, you've hired or you've signed a couple of players that – Played in the USFL, including a receiver that you actually previously coached with the Patriots on the practice squad. How useful do you think it is to just kind of have this lead to keep you guys more scouting tape to kind of add to this team the mold? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a benefit, you know. And and look, I think it speaks to a lot of the. There's a lot of guys that you know continue to work hard and um, they want to achieve their dream of of playing in the National Football League and creating a career for themselves. And um, there was a lot of good football played, um, you know, when you watch that league and. Um, you know, and, and we're not the only team that has grabbed a few of those guys and, and tried to add them to our roster. So, um, you know, Dave and his crew have gone over every, you know, ounce of film that we could possibly look at at this point to try to make the best decisions going forward for our roster. And it may not, may not be the last person that we add from that league, but um, those two guys definitely showed well for themselves. And, um, you know, and like I said, wherever we can get them, uh, if they fit, you know, what we're looking for and the type of team we're trying to build, um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us to look at that, that stuff. Josh, based on what you guys did in mini camps and OTAs, what's just kind of be the rollout? Is it a, is it a reinstall? Are you going to refresh some of the stuff you did? Or are you going to build upon that in these early, in the first few days of camp? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, we're going to go back through a lot of the things that we did. Um, there's not, you'll see today, uh, there's not going to be a lot of, um, competitive portions of this practice where the offense and the defense are going to go against each other. That's just our choice. You know, we're, we're going to kind of 
um, go back through and, and, and really focus on some of the teaching on, on each side of the ball. Um, you know, certainly in special teams, there'll be a little bit of that too. So um, a lot of, a little bit of a slower process here. We can't be in the pads till next week, you know, anyway. And so we wanted to really take some time and go back through our, you know, our fundamentals at each position, our communication that we really need to, to nail down here. And so the players, will, they understand this is this may be more like a little bit of a phase two day. And then, you know, we're going to build into some things that are going to look a lot more like OTA days until we finally have an opportunity to get in pads next week and then, you know, begin the physical portion of, of our development. So starting a week earlier and kind of help that uh, run, build that runway. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you're trying to – it's funny. I mean, I probably went through half dozen or more calendars where you're, you're looking at it, you're mapping it out and trying to figure out what's the right – way to approach it you know and you know you have 50 some days or whatever it is until we actually begin the regular season so it's really just you know what's the best use of our time what's the best use of our our on the field time you know our practice time so um you know this is the choice we made i don't know that there's really a right or a wrong you know we've reported a little earlier than jacksonville that doesn't mean that we made you know a better decision than they did you know and i think each football team has an opportunity to try to develop and bring along their group as they see fit and um, hopefully we're going to use the time to our to our benefit here and uh, develop you know the way we want to develop here Coach, along those lines he, he just is going to be what it is here I guess there's nothing around it, but you just have i've to, learned that you have, to, <laughs> you have to start training camp on like two record setting days potentially was, was that another complicating factor to preparing everything um you know we it's funny because i've studied temperature and uh you know humidity maybe more than i've ever thought about doing that too and and so um when you look at it you know you're going to get these days as you you all know uh, and then you're gonna, you may get a day where it's in the low 90s, and you know it's it's a little different. Um, I think practicing in the morning is the right thing to do, certainly for our team. Um, you know, and we've we've kind of we've we've set it up or, or tried to set it up the right way. I mean, hopefully it's the right decision to make. But if we need to move the mornings back because we have to have morning meetings following a day off, then we're going to go inside. You know, and that's just we've told the players that's just so that if we have to move the day back. We're not trying to get out there and, you know, 115 uh, as much as we can prevent it. So um, we're going to start early, try to get our work in. Um, if we need to adjust that for some reason, you know, whether that's temperature or, or some other factor, then we'll try to make a smart decision and do it. But um, guys are in early. We're used to working early, you know, at this point in time. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll start with that and hopefully we do a good job of hydrating. We went through a great, the medical people did a great job of going through the entire thing yesterday about, you know, hydration, you know, awareness of heat related illnesses, those kind of things. So, um, we'll be on top of that and, and continue to try to do the right things prior to getting out there, which is, I think the, really the big key. Have you decided whether you're a humidity guy or a dry heat guy yet? Um, that's always I, I've, 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 you know, nobody believes me when I say, when they say well, it's 100 degrees, and I say, yeah, but 100 degrees here is nothing like 100 degrees in Florida or back east because of the humidity. Yeah. You know, so it's 100. I walked out of the office last night, and it was 99 or whatever it was, but it felt like it, it felt great, you know, because there was not, there really wasn't that humidity factor. So. I don't sweat much out here. It's funny, you know, so I, I like that part. <clears throat> Last year, the Raiders only had one quarterback play during preseason games. How important is it for you having four guys available starting in two weeks? That yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, that, that room has been really an interesting room. That, like, you get to know these guys, and um, they work really hard. They really help and complement one another. Um, you'll see that on the practice field, too. Um, and so I, you know, eager to see that part play out. You know, it's obviously, you know, as important a position as, as we have. And, um, you know, he says, well, you know, Derek, you're starting. Well, you know, anybody behind the starting quarterback is the most important guy on the team, you know, after one injury. So um, it's, a, it's an important position uh, for every team in our league. And uh, it's really, you know, gonna, we're going to see that play out in practice. And then we're going to see it play out in preseason games. And, um, you know, our focus with that position is just going to be developing those guys, you know, and trying to bring them along and, and get them the opportunities that they need to improve. We've got time for a couple more guys. Yeah. Ed? Uh, just because we're going to talk to him later real quick, Duran, uh, the experience he brings, you know him well. Yep. What do you expect that he can do to that? that yeah. 
um, you know, Duran, first of all, Duran's a good player, you know, and, and so, um, you know, he's, he's played, you know, at a high level for a long time. Uh, been a very dependable guy. Um, does a tremendous job of preparing his body. And if you watch him go about his business, that would, if I was a young player, you know, I would really take note of, of the things he does, you know, whether it's in the cold tubs or, uh, you know, pre-practice or post-practice or extra meeting times or the things he does to prepare himself to have a great day of work. Um, those, those rub off on everybody. You know, he's a good communicator. He's smart. He loves football and he's a great teammate and he's very unselfish. So, um, you know, just, you know, blessed that he's here with us looking forward to another season together. Got time for one more. Anybody? Go ahead, Levi. Uh, how does it feel to have Kenyon Drake and Denzel kind of back in the fold, kind of starting to ramp up on their work? Uh, how beneficial will it be to add them back to the field? Yeah, I mean, Josh, too, and, you know, some of the guys that didn't didn't get a ton of work in the spring, um, you know, it's always, as a coach, when, when, when you hear and you finally get that final go-ahead from the training staff, like they're cleared, they're good to go, they're ready to go, you know, it just makes you feel good because you know you're kind of getting closer to whole. Um, you know, and, and those guys obviously have done a lot, you know, in this league, done a lot for this organization and um, eager to work with them. You know, as a as a coach who hasn't coached them before, there's always that, you know, level of unknown of, you know, how are these going to look? How is this going to look when he does it? So uh, eager to start seeing them do just some of the basic things we did in the spring and then uh, bring them along. But they both had a great attitude. They worked extremely hard to put themselves, you know, uh, in this position to come back and contribute. So um, excited about, you know, uh, seeing what they're going to do. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.